Okay, boys and girls, today we are going to be talking about the top brands for bushcrafting knives. Now, as always, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, and check out the Patreon. It helps a ton. But now let's jump into it. Now, before we get into the brands themselves, I do want to clarify here uh, one kind of thing about this video, and that is that we're going to be talking about the top brands for bushcrafting knives. Now, there are plenty of brands and knife makers out there that make fantastic bushcrafting knives. I'll take, for instance, Condor with the Condor Pterosaur. But if you look at Condor as a whole, they're primarily known for their machetes. So, their machetes and larger kind of survival knives. So when I talk about, so I don't want to talk about Condor in this video because even though the Pterosaur is a really good knife, the brand as a whole is not really known for doing a ton of bushcrafting knives. Now actually that might be a bad example because they do quite a few, but that kind of is where, uh, at least with my mind, when I gravitate towards or when I think about Condor, I really think about their larger knives and machetes as a whole. So that's kind of the mindset behind this uh, video. Obviously there's going to be a lot of brands out there that could fit the bill, but there are plenty of knife makers that do make fantastic knives. Uh, just I wanted to focus on specifically knife makers or brands that make consistently good bushcrafting knives for you to check out. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's jump right into it. The first one, of course, probably is no surprise, and that is Mora. Mora is a bushcrafting powerhouse. Essentially, I think it goes without saying, or kind of comes with the territory of bushcrafting and wilderness, uh, kind of camping and living. Uh, Mora is one of the first real brand names that unintentionally uh, was there at the beginning. People like Morris Kohansky or cemented the name Mora into bushcrafting legacy by extensively using things like the classic one and two. But of course, Mora has not saddled their laurels and they do make a number of fantastic outdoor knives, bushcrafting knives, camp knives that are pretty durable, that are very affordable or very price oriented and are overall fantastic knives. This one in particular is the Cons Bull. Uh, this is my new newest of the Moras in my collection, but obviously I have quite a few Moras, everything from the Garberg, the Bushcraft Black, the Eldris, the Consbul, and many more. So Mora is not only a very budget-oriented company, but they are really the ones that were there from the beginning for bushcrafting and not, like I said intentionally but they kind of were just the brand that got chosen in the beginning. So that is Mora. Okay, so now moving over to a brand that is a little less budget oriented is Bark River Knives or BRK. Now this is another one that I've had a few BRKs in my time and the one thing that I've always enjoyed about Bark River Knives is their fantastic attention to detail when it comes to ergonomics. There are few knives out there that feel as good in hand. Now I should say that you know most good knives made by respectable makers are going to have good ergonomics, but I think Bark River really takes it to another level and whether it's their classic coke bottle shape like the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter has uh, or something like the Bark River Knives Aurora, the overall ergonomics, the fit and feel to them is fantastic. And if there is anything ever wrong, they do a great job or a pretty good job at taking care of their customers, whether it's sheaths or knives. So Bark River, while like I said, by no means cheap and not always very accessible or not always easy to find, do a really good job with making really solid knives. Not only that, they are also, in my opinion, one of the more innovative companies out there because once again, like this Bark River Knives Bushcrafter is, I would say about 10 years old, if not older, uh, maybe not this one specifically, but the, the overall uh, production for them started about 10 years ago. And this knife is using CPM 3V. And that is a steel that is only just now really becoming readily accessible. You know, only in the past about two to three years to have you start have you started to see, you know, more bushcrafting survival oriented knives featuring steels like CPM 3V and other upper end steels. So they are pushing the limits constantly and making really solid, very awesome designs. Once again, the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter or BRK Bushcrafter is one of my go-to uh, blades. So it kind of goes without saying that this company knows what they're doing when it comes to making bushcraft designs and they are pretty consistent 
consistent in making them. Now, of course, BRK does offer a number of different combat and other, you know, like machetes and stuff, but they do a good job at putting out really high quality bushcraft blade designs. The next one is going to be LT Wright, and it's no surprise probably to many of you that LT Wright ended up on the list. This is, of course, the Legome, and this is one of my favorites too, Sim very similarly to the BRK Bushcrafter. This is one of my go-tos and has a lot of design inspiration from uh, Morse Kohansky himself, and so this is a really awesome knife with a ton of wilderness knowledge put into it, but even if you don't go with something like the Legome, even their Camp Muck and many other designs that LT Wright makes is they make some really fantastic design bushcrafting and camp knives. Once again, the Legome is just one of them and overall the fit and feel to them is great. They are, I think, really solid knives. <laughs> In my opinion, I think the things that stand out for LT Wright have to be the they are very simplistically designed, they have very sharp spines, and they are overall fantastically tough knives. Most of their blades use O1 tool steel, which while not a new or fancy or high-tech steel, is a very tried and true steel that has good performance and very good toughness to it. So you can really put these things through the ringer. I've certainly put this Legome through the ringer. Of course, it is blued out and uh, it is a fantastic knife to use in field. So that is the uh, uh, Legome, but ultimately LT Wright. Okay, now moving on to Tops. Now Tops is an interesting maker because they definitely dabble in many, many different spheres from things like machetes to push daggers to bushcrafting knives to all kinds of different combat in wilderness blades, survival knives. They will make just about anything. Of course, they have things like the famous uh, TB Tracker series of knives, but they do also put out a good number of really good bushcrafting knives. Now this of course is probably their most well-known model, the Topps Fieldcraft by Brothers of Bushcraft, but they also have the Tanimboka, the Tanimboka Puko, they have the 4.5 inch uh, Dragonfly, and they have a few other designs out there that are very much oriented towards bushcrafting and camp life and they do ex an excellent job so th they don't solely just make you know weird wild designs they do have quite a few really solid bushcrafting knives and i think that these knives are a lot like se and that's kind of the reason why i didn't include se on this list is you know they make a differentially heat treated 1095 blade that is super tough and the price point that comes in on a lot of their knives is right around the 120 to 150 dollar mark so if you are looking to get you know a better kind of mid-ranged um, knife for bushcrafting this is going to be a pretty good brand to go to if you don't want to go to LT right okay last one up on the list and it's not too dissimilar to LT right is the sister company battle horse knives now of course these guys used to be blind horse knives but they did split off so you have Battle Horse Knives and LT Wright, but nonetheless, just like LT Wright, uh, Battle Horse Knives makes a ton of very fantastic bushcrafting knives. In fact, they've made different types of inspired by Mora designs, and the Battle Lore, which is this knife here, is certainly a very traditional bushcraft design. Of course, it following in the wood lore, bush lore type uh, blade design, and overall, they make a number of very fantastic. Um, bushcraft blade offerings and similar to their sister company they use a lot of o1 tool steel which is incredibly durable and my previous uh, battle lore the one that i had before this one i put through the ringer crazy i put through the ringer in crazy ways i used it in a saw alone to make the very large square notches in pretty sizable pieces of wood and was intentionally trying to break that knife and I obviously couldn't because O1 one is pretty pretty darn tough. So these knives are very tough and they have a lot of very cool designs to them. Ultimately I kind of go back and forth between LT and Battle Horse 
taking whatever you know knives suit my needs once again the legome is a good smaller bushcrafting blade and so not quite as large as the battle lore but you know if one fits my needs more than the other then that's the one i end up taking but they share a lot of similar properties and are both very good knives and they have I've used both of these for many, many hours of bushcrafting tasks, and they are both very capable. And once again, like I said, both companies do a fantastic job at producing really solid bushcrafting knives. Of course, like I said, the tastes of each company are a little bit different, so the end product will be different in regards to design, but the same high quality materials and technical know-how goes into both designs or both uh, knife companies. So that is essentially the top five brands for me. I think there there are definitely more out there. Once again, knives like knife makers like Falcon even do make really solid bushcrafting knives, but I think a lot of times most of what they're orientated at is uh, combat slash survival knives. I mean, the F1 is used by military forces as a survival knife and same with the S1 and the A1. So they are really good survival knives and I, I would label Falcon even more as a good survival knife company. So hopefully that kind of addresses some of the comments so that if I didn't pick your favorite brand, especially brands like SE or brands like SE or Falkneven understand that primarily I see them more as survival knife companies uh, than I do specifically bushcraft knife companies. So it doesn't mean that they don't make good bushcrafting knives, it just means that just means that that's not their primary market. So anyways guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.